Hey, good looking. I'm so glad you came to my kitchen today because I'm doing a collaboration today of why do I blank? Now, this collaboration was put out by Miss Vicky, Vicky's Country Home, and she asked a few other wonderful ladies to join in on this collaboration. She asked Miss Lori over at Whip Poor Will Holler, and she asked Miss Katie over at Heritage Ways. She asked Teresa over at Teresa Stay at Home, and she asked Mary at uh, Mary's Nest, and along with myself. Now, we were all asked to do a collaboration on why do I, and we fill in the blank. Well, I'm going to sit there and give you an explanation of why I am the way I am. And it would be a lot to do with why do I. First off, I was brought up with a lot of the old uh, ways where the women canned. Uh, we didn't go and you did go and buy these convenience foods. Um, our convenience food, or what I was brought up on, was what you had on your canning shelf. Now, whatever type of jam your mom or your family all canned up that year was the only jams and jellies you ate. And I'm still that way to this day, some 50 some years later. Now, um, with that all being said, I can in a lot of the old fashioned way of canning, but I also am known for my hipster or my rebel canning ways. Um, I guess that's just my generation who was brought up in it and how we kind of made it our own. Um, now, let me tell you, when I sit there and say hipster canning and rebel canning, they're not the approved way of doing the canning. Not yet. It doesn't say that they won't be in the future. But I always believe that if it wasn't for women like me, who are the hipster or a rebel canner, you would not be having some of these new and oh so delicious canning recipes to be canning up each and every year. Like, let's say, uh, the canning uh, pizza sauce that I do. I do it one that my family just loves. It is the caramelized onion and the red wine pizza sauce. Now, that is one of the pizza sauce that you can't find on any store shelves. You can find it on my shelves real easy because I can it. But that's also because I was brought up that way. But at one time, that was considered to be a rebel canning recipe or a hipster canning recipe. So in that form, I'm proud to sit there and say, I am a rebel canner. I am a hipster canner. I'm not telling you to follow me in my hipster canner ways because, like I said, they're not approved by the government. Um, why I am the way I am, I guess we would have to go back in time and it would all have to start out at the young tender age of nine when my mother was first diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, I always ask for easy bake ovens and everything for Christmas and I never got one. <laughs> a 
Lo and behold, to my surprise, at the tender age of nine, ta-da! I am my mom's whole kitchen at my little fingertips. Now, I love to be in the kitchen always. As young as I can remember, I was always in the kitchen. I was always asking my mom for something to do. And she always gave me something to do in the kitchen. Now, she's in the hospital. She's fighting for, you know, her life. She's, you know, fighting this breast cancer. I'm at home with my baby brother who was just born. And on necessity, you want to eat. Well, there's only so many tuna fish sandwiches that you can eat and only so many tomatoes that you can eat before you sit there and you whip out one of your mom's cookbooks. Besides that, watching Julia a child as a child was, you know, all right, y'all, maybe I can do some of the stuff that I watch mom do or maybe what I watch grandma do or my Aunt Kathy, you know. I just loved the fact that I could now finally step up to the plate and do something I like to do. And at the time, I didn't know it. It was also helping me cope with my mom having breast cancer. Now at the same time as my mom having the breast cancer, my cousin's mom, my Aunt Anita, she also had breast cancer. Well, my Aunt Anita, she lost the battle to cancer. I was so afraid that was gonna happen with my mom. And also at the same time, as my mom's fighting it, my best friend's mom was fighting the breast cancer. So, and she also lost the battle. So I guess that kind of really set the hook on me where I dove into cooking and baking and whatnot. We had family members coming in from out of state, from out of town, and I was brought up when you had family come from a distance. We always offered you know, our place for a place for them to stay. You fed them, you know. That was just what you did back in them times. Well, I was a little lady of the house, and I guess it was time for me to step up to the plate, so be it. And like I said, it was a stress reliever. I didn't know it at the time. It just helped me kind of, I don't know, help me cope. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to break down like that. But from that young tender age and going through that, having out of town guests to, uh, that I had to entertain at the home front and keep the home front fires burning, as what they used to say back in them days. Well, they were just so surprised that a little nine-year-old girl could sit there and cook some of these dishes that I was cranking out. And I was loving it. Like I said, it was helping me cope. I mean, I did a lot of baking. I mean, I did a lot of mistakes along the way. 
Um, I love trying some of the dishes that my mom never made, but I found really interesting or that I saw Julia Child on TV making it. I wanted to be, you know, just like Julia. <laughs> oh. Well, my mom survived that. And, well, she came home and, well, guess what? Little darling daughter this wasn't quite right to really push off the kitchen back to my mom and my mom was more than happy to share it with me because she had a daughter that you know had the same love of cooking as she did so we would be in the kitchen being you know very harmonious with our cooking and I love going out on holidays and helping my mom prepare for you know the dishes even though she was having me, you know, whip up the mashed potatoes. In my eyes, woo! You know, look at me, y'all. <laughs> I remember that. Um, just being out there, helping, watching, absorbing all that knowledge. Like I said, my grandma, she was a wonderful cook -o wonderful and she came from a large family and she had oh, so many sisters <coughs> now all my aunts oh my god they all could cook really 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 good like I said the competition in my family was steep. We came up, we had a whole bunch of wonderful cooks. I mean, wonderful cooks. I mean, so many wonderful recipes from so many wonderful women. And I'm glad that I have some of them recipes. And I want to make sure that none of my family's recipes or my husband's family's recipes uh, just die off and are never made. I want them to be out there just in case there is a family member that wants to sit there and pull one of the old recipes from the recipe file in. Ah, oh, I remember great, great, great grandma's, you know, stuffing recipe when, you know, my mom used to make it, you know. I want that to happen in my family. That's part of the reason why I started my whole cooking channel up here. So my children and my grandchildren would always have our family recipes along with some of the recipes that they were brought up with by me. Um, like I said, they are always being brought up with a new gadget being brought into the kitchen and me converting a recipe over for this or for that. They always saw me, you know, well, cool, you know. I get to add another, you know, way of making this one dish. You know, I just love the fact that when I pull out a recipe card of mine, I know, I love knowing, okay, I can either make it in my slow cooker, my Instapot, my sous vide. I just love the fact of knowing there's so many different ways I can make that one recipe. Two, I love being able to share these wonderful recipes with all of you. I mean, that was one part of the family that I always loved about the women was the recipe swaps. Or like at Christmas time, the cookie swaps. Ah, oh, I just loved it. Ah, oh, could I have the recipe for this cookie? You know, because you never had the cookie before because your aunt never made it before. And, oh my God, you're in heaven. But you need this recipe from, you know, Aunt Bernice. 
So, I mean, that's what it's all about. Traditions. Family. And I want to share it with just not my family. But I consider all of you out there my family. Now, my kitchen gadget obsession that maybe some of you have noticed in me. Yes, I do love my kitchen gadgets. Um, but one thing I will let you know, I had an electric pressure cooker before I bought my Instapot. And I used that bugger and I used that bugger and I used that bugger and I used that bugger. I used my buggers until huh, my toys break. Now, if it was a real super gadget that I just really adore, yeah, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy another one. You know, hence why I bought an Instapot this time around. I love the electric pressure cookers. The SoV cooker, I'm finding out I'm really liking that. And I'm looking forward to sharing a lot of new videos with all of you on that. Uh, my Blackstone griddle. Um, I've had my eye on that one for a while. And I could sit there and blame Cabela's because every time my husband would take me there, he always sat there and would find me right in front of this big old griddle. Just telling him, look at this, look at this, honey, 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 look, look. And now look, I own one. I adore it. Um, my KitchenAid mixer. Uh, my very first one was a used one and my grandma gave that to me and then my mom bought me one in my second marriage or I should sit there and say my parents bought me one in my second marriage and it was a blue one and when it died uh -huh, I was heartbroken well then when I was hunting for a new KitchenAid mixer I found a limited edition from KitchenAid and it kind of ties back all the way to the very beginning of my story of the breast cancer. They only made a limited edition of these in this uh, breast cancer pink or fuchsia pink. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous KitchenAid mixer. Um, <laughs> My dehydrator. I think I have the deluxe of the dehydrators out there because like the Excalibur, they only hold six trays. Well, what good is six trays going to do me? I'm going to be there forever and a day trying to dehydrate my stuff. I'm trying to get it all done. My dehydrator holds 20 trays. And I like the fact that I can sit there and put it 20 trays high. I can rotate it all out. Uh, I just love it. And that one I also can blame my mom for. Um, I have so many kitchen gadgets. Way too many to mention, but that obsession. <laughs> Mama, you got lots of explaining to do to lots of people because that's because of you. <laughs> but I'm easy to buy for. My kids will sit there and tell you that I am one of the easiest persons to buy for when it comes to getting me like a birthday present. And they usually will all chip in and get me something that they know I have been wanting and I'm greatly appreciative to that. Now, I've been told I have unique ways of cooking. I guess that would go back to my Julia Child's ways of watching her on TV. I just didn't watch Julia Child on TV. I watched, uh, I believe his name was Jeff Smith. 
on TV. I've watched a whole bunch of chefs on TV, and they made some extravagant, you know, delicious dishes on there. And I remember going home, oh, buying their cookbooks, and going to my cookbook obsession. <laughs> that goes all the way back to my grandma. <coughs> Okay, I have a large collection of cookbooks. Now that, I guess I can blame on my grandma because my grandma always gave me cookbooks every year for Christmas because I love to cook so much. Um, in fact, she got me the very first subscription of the very first year and I have the very first issue of the Taste of Homes magazine because it's made and produced in my state here so I'm proud to sit there and say I've been following them since the birth of that uh, magazine and that's because of my grandma. She always gave all of us women a subscription to that magazine. All right, I've been told that I have a unique way of cooking things. I don't see it. I've always cooked this way. Okay, I don't want to make this too long. Um, sorry about the few little breakdowns along the way or the few tears here and there. Um, but I guess my family has made me the way I am, um, surviving an ice storm and having to rely on what you have put up in your pantry have taught me a lot and I've never wavered from the ways that I was raised. I mean, I guess if you're always raised around canning, canning was normal, and that's what canning was for me. I mean, in fact, when I was first married at 17, I was amazed at all my friends that looked at me that, canning, why would you want to do that? That's such a waste of time. That's old school, y'all. <laughs> Until they started tasting some of the things I can. And then little by little, they started converting over. Now, not all my friends can. Um, and not all my friends are cooks like me. I have friends that, you know, are the convenience food people, which are perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. None at all. But for me, that's just not on my agenda. I rather reach into what I like to call my mini grocery store and opening up the door to my pantry and just going from shelf to shelf or going out to my freezer and picking some meat up. You know, not all the time. There's a lot of times I will have my son run to the grocery store on his way home from work and grab me something from the store and bring it to me. Um, besides that, most of the time we buy a side of, you know, a half of a cow, we'll buy a pig, we'll sit there and have it all wrapped up, we put it in our freezer, I'll can some of it. Um, it's just who I am. It's how I was brought up. Uh, my mom and dad always bought, you know, a side of beef, a whole pig. I mean, we had chickens galore in the freezer. Uh, we even had buffalo in our freezer. Um, it's just how I was brought up. And like I say, I guess when you're brought up with that stuff, it's just the norm. Um, I brought my kids up with it now. Some of my kids are thinking about 
maybe canning it a little here and there, but not getting into it like when I'm into it. Uh, they're more of a convenient shelf, you know, person. But they're millennials, what do you expect? Um, but there are the things, like I said, they will sit down and they will can. Like uh, the stuff that needs to be water bathed. Now, if it needs to be pressure canned, they know where to come. I'll pressure can it for them. But that's why I do what I do. So that is my why do I story. Now, before I close out, my story started out with my mom having breast cancer and her surviving breast cancer. I want to sit there and make it my channel's mission along with my mom's mission. For all of you wonderful ladies out there who may be watching this, I want you to pick one special day. No, let it be the day that you were born. You know, let's say the 6th. I want you, every day on the 6th of that month, give yourself a breast examination. If there's anything I can sit there and publicly do for each and every one of you, so another one never has to suffer what my mom has suffered, please do a self-breast self -breast examination. Now, I want to sit there and thank Miss Vicki for putting out this collaboration of Why Do I? I want you to make sure that you go over and visit Miss Lori's channel, Miss Mary's channel, Miss Katie's channel, Teresa's channel, and Vicky's channel and watch their Why Do I collaboration videos. Now I'm anxious to sit there and hear each and every one of their stories just as much as I enjoyed sharing my story with each and every one of you and why I have the love of cooking the way I do and why I have the love of homesteading the way I do. And I have the love of sharing my knowledge with each and every one of you. So with that all being said, I want you all to have a great day. And I love each and every one of you. And y'all come back now. You hear? Thank you for watching.